these lands have got spirit. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm playing Tan Halam, the World Walker. Tan Halam is a Bant deck that can make copies of your lands or artifacts. But in order to do so, you have to attack with them. This deck has a good number of artifacts that are worth making copies of, assuming you want to cast them, and some fun lands and landfall synergies. Uh, Tanhalam is a very unusual build because it's four mana, four or three three that requires you to have something untapped to attack with it as a three three. Hope it survives, and go from there. Um, I would say if you're looking for a pure artifact enters the battlefield kind of deck, take a look at Sahili or maybe Abuelo. If you're looking for something that's a bit more strange and unusual with an infinite lockout loop in it, well, Tan's your guy. Uh, I would say that one of the more unusual things you can do is you can make copies of MDFCs, meaning the modal double-faced cards that happen to also be lands. That way you get a copy of the spell in your hand so you can cast it again. Other things you can do, I mentioned a lockout, include casting the one ring every single turn. Indestructible things are pretty dang good because you can attack with them and not have to worry about them dying. And in the case of the one ring, then you can play it and give yourself protection and then attack with it the next turn. I don't have it in this deck, but there's also a way to do a time warp lockout loop if you have enough islands and you give yourself a uh, mystic sanctuary, you know, the card that's banned in modern, to put it back on top of your deck and keep taking extra turns. Uh, by making copies of those. Oh, isn't that a fun thing to do? Well, no, not really. This deck, though, is actually running a lot more land synergy and is running things that make our lands that get turned into spirits a little stronger. Or sometimes it's our artifacts that get turned into spirits. Tatiova turns those lands into four fours. It's a three three in paper. Don't question it. They just changed her. And we also have Supreme Phantom in here to buff those spirited lands and Tanhalam himself. This is a you know, okay deck, it does definitely fall into the issue of it's Bant Landfall, and that's okay. Bant Landfall has a lot of good cards in it, and if you really want to go wild, you can swap out your top end with tons of other good cards. Um, I'm personally running Portal to Phyrexia as a copyable artifact. Uh, Coma, because it's just fantastic and Simic colors, especially when you're trying to stop your opponents from doing things. But cards like Crater Hoof Behemoth, um, the various Emrakuls, Ulamogs, Kozileks are also great choices for a deck like this. So we're going to take Tanhalam into the queue and we're going to animate some lands and artifacts. All you men are talk, the polar werebear. She's going fishing and she makes food when she does. This seems like an okay hand. I am not able to play my commander, but we do have a bit of ramp. We have something that gives us more ramp. We have something that gives us more ramp. Did, did I make it clear? We have ramp in our hand. Uh, Oyaman Artuk is a very cute commander because she comes out and she makes fish, like actual factual fish. When you uh, when you end up playing this card, you can kind of roll the bones, see what you happen to get. And it's going to be a little bit random because you're getting a fish off the spell book when you sacrifice food. And sometimes this deck is playing a lot of food and sometimes it's only playing a little food. There goes Oyaman Artuk on the battlefield. Um, she has Hexproof until she starts dealing damage. So I could wait until she hits and then put the Reflection Net on her. Spirit. I could even uh, block there, but I feel like it's fine to let them have the food. A lot of these have flash. All right, so with that on the stack, or the food exists, we're gonna toss a net to put the bear, uh, put the bear away for I don't know illegal fishing. But that sounds right. Maybe they'll protect it. I know. I love this cover of Snake Eater. I heard um, a cover of Snake Eater performed live at a consoles concert. Not consoles, a 8-bit uh, big band concert. It was so fun. Yeah, they were fishing out of season. They were trying to take home a catch that was the wrong size. Um, 
Who, who am I feeling here? Hawk. Alarm. I'm like even thinking, yeah, I, I think I want my uh, commander this turn. Animating the net. It's a 3-3. Three, three. We'll use it to attack the fairy. Would you rather keep your spirit alive or your Teferi? Probably the Teferi. I don't have a way to cast another net. Till next turn. And I'll play the land that comes in tapped. I make another spirit. Yeah, I'm net decking. Thank you. Thank you for the puns. Hi, Harbinger. You binging any Harbs lately? Girl, I love binging Harbs. Um. Hey. These are legendary lands, so copying them is gonna get, um, bad. Oh. Uh, okay. Interesting. I see. Um, this is it. This is gonna get legendary ruled. Gotta put the Harbinger away. So Metal Gear Solid 3 specifically was not a game I actually played. My oldest brother was playing it and we, we had like a TV set up in the basement and I would just go down and watch him play because it, it really is like gameplay interspersed with tons of cutscenes and dialogue. So it was a nice movie to watch and hang out with my brother. Aw, Halfling's so cute. Oh, there's something good to double. Double it up. Let's pay some life. That good, good green stuff. Exile that spirit. I want to get more damage on face. I'm offering them like a... If they want to, they can kill that. But it makes sure that Teferi is dead. While well, I'm still getting a lot of damage in. Great, I can turn you guys into a copy of nothing. Because nothing is exiled here. Your tokens. Nice. Skythev Apparition is getting eaten by the wolf. This wolf can also eat food to become indestructible. Enjoying people playing video games. I firmly believe that the original Twitch was just little siblings watching their older siblings play. I grew up like, I would watch my brothers play like Quake and stuff. It was fun then and it's fun now. I'm actually going to animate the already animated Restless Prairie, or animatable. Ah! They put it back into my hand. Now I can't copy my net this turn. This seems like a net loss. I'll attack it with all of these. Nothing but net. If they go to eat the food, I'm going to use Ottawara to throw the wicked wolf back into their hand. Or 
I think this might work. Overwrite the zero, zero. Perfect. Yeah, that does work. Hawk out here doing work. Surprise, it's a larger Lana. Ooh, Verdant Rejuvenation only hits for four, but it hit um one huge thing and three smaller things. They have this Liberator, which they do not have mana open. No, they do have mana open for it. They can uh, tap for two. They can use to destroy, like, if I try to animate a Reflection Net. That's pretty good. Um, let's tap the Oiland. Untap the Oiland. Boy, it's land. if they destroy it. Indeed, they do. That's a big dragon. Doesn't matter. Swinging in. Actually, I think I'll bounce it. I can't exile it. more damage if we do this with the prairie. Nice. We're down to seven. You need hot chocolate? Oh, so you can uh, wake up and focus. So I volunteered to be a barista for an event at the, uh, like, the nursing home that my dad's at. So I'm going to make, like, some bad mochas and hot chocolate and cappuccinos and whatever else people want to eat. Oh, perfect. Dustless Anchorage. That will be able to fly. Very good. Everybody, get in here. We got nothing but net. By nothing but net, I mean we very much just have a net. We're going to take out uh, one of their blockers, this Legion Karyotide, with it. Volunteer as a bartender at the local nursing home. Yo, you getting the old folk crunk? I'm gonna get them caffeinated. Oh, GG, Oi Minartok. That was a really fun game. Omnath, locus of all. Loads of colors for loads of, well, mana pips. This is an unusual card because it does actually care about the number of colored mana symbols in the casting cost of a card. So, like, Omnath has five of those. And there's gonna be a bunch of them that have three or more in their deck because that's what Omnath cares about. Uh, Omnath also lets you bank mana, but it makes it into black mana when you do. Um, for better or for worse. We talking about putting Frangelica in coffee? Whoa. Frangelica has such a cool bottle. I feel like the the little, like, it's like a monk's body doing this is a, is a very popular one. Oh, they're solving the equation. What are you solving for? Isn't it Kramer's Terror? It's, it's, it's a liqueur, right? Sorry, I'm totally paying attention to the game. Oh, they got a tooth and a nail, so their plan is to bank a lot of mana to cast this to probably get some sort of game-winningly good combo. Noted. Um, I could go for some big ramp of my own with Key to the Archive this turn, or I could try to stop them from getting out their commander. I did not need to knock that in. Noted. Uh, I'm gonna destroy the Mind Stone to keep them further away from Omnath. If they get a land, they can still play him next turn. It's just gonna be 
you know, less to follow up with. Uh, wait, that doesn't tap for colored mana anyway. Oh, but they could use a star to convert it. Right. Hmm. Key. Time warp. Sounds good. Mirage Mirror is cute because it lets me turn into copies of their stuff. But I don't really think that's what I want. You know what? Well, we're going to discard the Uro since we can bring it back from the grave anyway. I'll attack with Loran. She has Vigilance. Putting Amaretto in coffee. I have a Walnut Liquor that I like in coffee. Cold Steel Heart. Gotta name some more colors there. Naming red. I don't really want to exile my Uro out of my own graveyard. But it does make the Scrap Gorger happy. You can also just exile the Time Warp. I do not have the Time Warp loop in this deck. Um, so that's totes fine with me. Solid Singularity! Thank you for the two-month reset. Scrap Gorger's not a May, but I can put something else in my graveyard for it to uh, exile. Boromir. To stop any free spells. Salt Singularity, thank you so much for supporting the channel. I appreciate that a lot. Boromir will cut off any free spells. They are a five-color deck, which means they probably have some uh, stuff that causes free spells to happen. As they so often do. Oh, by the way, this is like a really cute piece of tech. Um, you can use Kitesail Larsenus to turn one of your cards into a treasure so you can copy it off of Tan Halam. Would you like to see me demonstrate said stupid thing that I can do? Of course you would. Of course you would. So I'm going to uh, get this Kitesail Larsenus out. And we're going to target our Loran and Cold Steel Heart. Turn it into a treasure. And I'm off! Thank you for the six month resub! <laughs> this is just me like showing off. Here's a silly thing I can do in my deck. It's cool tech! Also, bye, Uro. I want to hit face. So now we get another copy of Loran in hand. Which is good, because they clearly have a lot of artifacts. Nice. Thanks! It's just a thing we can do. <laughs> Treasure Loran can be used to pay for new Loran. Also, this protects us against some, like, other type of board wipes if they're not exiling these, but if they're just getting rid of all the creatures. Boromir's already helping us a bit with that. Loran's a mimic. I know, look at her! Isn't she devious looking? In her funny little treasure form. <laughs> I think she's fun. Alright, so we're gonna, uh, go yum 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 Loran. And now we use the Loran to do this. Pop it. We'll use Tan to copy Belagad Sanctuary. Swing in with everybody. And I think it's going to be lethal. Getting that extra three damage in. We're pretty wide. We got a little bit of flying damage too. That's going to be a GG. Admiral Brass un Sinkable, a pirate's commander who brings them back from the grave and makes them bigger, faster, and stronger, too. To start with the wooded foothills. We have some exile removal uh, in hand. The witness protection we will probably want to save for Admiral Brass. All right, Siren Storm Tamer. That's a pirate worth exiling. There we go. I'd love to, like ramp on this turn. I don't think that that's the right move, though. We're going to put the Storm Tamer in the hole before it has mana up to sacrifice itself in response. And we can also just play our tap land. Like, the Restless Prairie is going to come and tap no matter what. 
And these Restless cards are cool with Tan because they get their buff, whatever their on attack ability is, even if we're just playing it um, like this. Ooh, do I want Tireless Provisioner at this turn? Let's go for the Cold Steel Heart. I'll name green. I got a lot of green in hand. Perfect. What format is this? This is Historic Brawl, or as they call it now, just Brawl. I don't know why they changed it. Probably because nobody plays Brawl. Um, ooh, Corsair Captain buffs all your pirates, gets you a treasure token. Hashtag Yarhar, hashtag Yoho. This is a jumpstart card. Hmm. It's too big for me to put in the hole. But I'm still going to use this to make a copy of the hole. They want that in their graveyard so they can bring it back. Portable hole can put the treasure away, though. And that is my goal and wow that was a really early scoop considering uh how powerful admiral brass is i guess they were just purely relying on getting her out next turn whereas i was hoping to get out roaming throne next turn which lets me animate two things and has double team trigger twice as long as i name spirits gg hi marshall argyle hi marshall argyle i'm amy this is a card that wants you to kill it over and over because when it dies, it gets you the goods. It gets you Argyle's blood fast, lets you transform it, and then lets you just kind of keep bringing it back over and over and over uh, until you are summoning vampire demons. It's a, it's a deck that's all about killing and reanimating your own commander, which I think is really neat. I also built a High Marshal Argyle, um, and I, I kind of enjoyed the unusual play pattern of it. Ooh, bread. Yum, 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 yum. Draw me a card. Oh, Uro. I like Uro. I'll tack for one. Boop. Here he comes. It's the High Marshal. Which um, I don't particularly want to trade into for uh, the reasons we outlined before. I could hold open... Uh, some of these fancy little instants. I don't, I don't really want to. I'd rather just play Uro. Got ourselves wooded foothills ready to crack open. Uh huh. It's a it's a cool way to avoid your commander tax. We do not block it by avoid part of its commander tax. What we're talking about is because it can transform the blood fast. Um. The blood fast turns into a land, so the first time it dies, you essentially get one mana back. Which is just good. It's really helpful. As for Sentinel, tax their sacrificing spells. Oh no, that's a call of the ring. Do you pay the one? They did! Okay, so I'll crack open my wooded foothills. I'm just going to grab my triome. There it is. Spara's headquarters. What to animate? Do I want some bread? Do I want to get that bread? Or do I just want to spend another turn ramping? Ramping and holding up spells. Look at another Sparta's headquarters in hand. That's why I feel like I'm doing something with my commander. Oh, Sayania! Thank you for the sub! Let me make sure that pops up here. Gotta click one of these buttons. This one! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate that a lot. Okay, so they're casting not dead after all. They are not paying the one. 
and they're sacrificing it to exile my commander. This comes back. It's wicked now. Yeah, wicked sick, bro. Well, since we do land stuff, I've got something that likes lands. Uh, I've got Mithweaver Pock in hand. Uh, I also have Oracle of Moldaya. I think I want to see if I've got more lands on top of my deck. Take a little looky-loo here. No, that's a farewell, though, which is fairly rude against their commanders since they're all about dying and coming back, dying and coming back. Well, we might be saying adios, sayonara, and goodbye next turn. For anybody wondering, there are two board wipes in the deck. There's farewell, uh, because it is extremely versatile and stupid good, and... Uh, the Eternal Wanderer, which I'm going to count as a board wipe. It can make each player sacrifice all but one creature of your choice. G giving this guy a toughness boost would be a nerf. Yeah, it would make him harder to kill. What's even the point? Right of Oblivion. This will get them the enchantment that they crave. They do pay the one. I can no longer play lands off the top of my deck. I don't feel that pressured now to farewell. Um, I, like, they do have these pieces, but I could also just wait for the tokens. I would love it. I had a little bit more land. So I think this is just going to be a kick it with the ramp, Skyclave Relic kind of turn. Esper Sentinel, keep, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, life totals even. By the way, these are all uh, enchantments, not artifacts. They're going to seize my thoughts. They can drop that farewell. That's just going to feed my graveyard where we've had an Uro patiently waiting. Because uh, this makes permanent copies of things, we are more easily able to fill our graveyard for something like an Uro Escape. So they drop Cyclonic Rift, probably because it's even more annoying than a Farewell. Does this count as a board wipe? I guess it kind of counts as a board wipe. Nice! Sarah Paragon! Uh, Sarah Paragon is just a fun little card here. Um, yeah, we're going to hit uh, Creatures, Enchantments, and graveyards. Fire row. I know, it's gone. That's fine. And we'll uh, chill here since we do have a counter spell. We've got some other things we can cast. Yep. Rift is totally a board wipe. I just want to take things out of our graveyard since they probably have even more recursion for it. Um, we will memory lapse this. Throw that back on top of their deck. There's a couple of, uh, I'll call them the choice counter spells in this deck. They are, uh, unfortunately, the best way to make it so this card does lots of work. Hawk. Hawk champ. Growth spiral. Looking for a land. I mean, that's a land enough. It doesn't get copied with Hawk, though. Um, oddly. Uh, it is not... It is not a land in the way that the game cares about. Gaining life. Doesn't get a copy. We can copy it with this, though. Yeah, I don't care about... Uh, can't... Wow, I don't care about hitting their commander here with the wash away. I think it's a lot nicer to, uh... Just kind of chill here. A point of counter spells, so you can have your cards able to do the thing they do. It's tough. It's tough when you have, like, something that's four mana and has other requirements for it. Oh, Lurus! Lurus with Xander's Wake is really cute. Really cute. Um, okay, so let's grab you, Tanhalam. Auto Tapper left us with this up, but that's fine. It's a spirit, so it's getting buffed by the Phantom Supreme. The Supreme Phantom. Saying hi, Lurus. Hey.
They're blocking with the High Marshal. Making it so it will die and come back. I am fine with that. And if they could have also, like, just sacrificed it in response. They will get a card off Sanders Wake since a creature died. You thought I was going to Skyclave it immediately? No, I feel I am in a position that I can just kind of hang. And I kind of want to protect my board and win off my commander. And also this menace kitty cat right here. Meow meow. Mondrak! Ooh, more tokens! They could sacrifice this to the land itself in order to make the tokens. Oh, that would be a really rude way to reply to it. Huh. The beside you lets me, uh, take it out. Okay, I'm going to make a copy of Seagate. Swinging in. I guess we don't want you in. Yep, beside doing the land. In response to this being sacrificed or dying. It's going to change how that trigger resolves. It's not going to give them tokens. We could have also hit uh, the blood fast for this. They could choose to transform it. They gain a little life. But they still gotta deal with Pock. By the way, you can also sacrifice things to Mondrak. Looks like they're just taking the trades. Maybe hoping for a board wipe next turn. We're gonna draw a whole bunch of cards. They've got a counterspell, a little bit of exiling removal, and we'll win the game. Nice. GG. Goshen Tie of Life's Origin. A Shrines Commander, but more specific than that, it's a five-color enchantment stack. Yeah, I say more specific because sometimes this is not actually a Shrines deck. It'll be running a few choice Shrines, but not all of them. Wish they would. Wish they would. I'll start with a land that comes in tapped no matter what. The Restless Prairie. Got two mana up. Um, doesn't look like they'd be ramping this turn, so I will be ramping this turn. Uh, I'm going to use the Cold Steel Heart since it's copyable with our commander here. I will name... I'm going to get some good, like, good, good green stuff here. Got so much green here. Seder Enchanter. Yep, that's, that's good for things. And I'll play our Scrap Gorger and hold up Tail's End. Because countering their commander would probably be pretty nice. This is on cast, though, so, like, they, they can still cast their commander and draw a card. Gotta make sure I'm not targeting the ability, just the Goshen Tie. The Shrines Commander. I I really wish that Goshen Tai was like a little bit powered down. It does not need this return enchantment from Graveyard ability. It's already so strong. Thankfully, we have a little bit of Graveyard hate here with the uh, Armored Scrap Gorger. Uh, am I feeling Nissa? I am feeling Nissa. This is very nice in this deck because as we're animating lands, we can use her to give them all indestructible if we manage to get our ult to go. Also, she's just an incredibly good card. Are you playing a lands deck in green? Nissa might be good for you. She doesn't work as well in like the graveyard lands decks. Think like, you know, Lord Windgrace, Soul of Windgrace, Get Rog Monster, I guess Grolnok. Still good. Okay, Conclave. Oh, Dip, do I really have enough mana for that already? Let's 
I mean, listen, I'd, I'd love to use you here, but uh, I think we're just putting our opponent in a coma. Just bomb after bomb. I guess we, uh, we can attack first since we have Vigilance. Give me a little bit of graveyard hate. Do you have exile removal or instant speed removal before we get Coma's Coil? Well, they didn't yet. But their world tree is online, so they have all of the mana in all of the colors. Field of Ruin? Yeah, the, the Field of Ruin here, I think it is a little iffy. You can kind of use it as bad fixing, though. But with world tree, now it's able to tap for everything. Nice. So they got Sanctum of All. I'll exile a card out of my own graveyard just to get another uh, counter on you. And this will be getting them some shrines. Listen, I got four mana, but this is just better. It's just better. I don't even need fancy duels. At least they're playing shrines. I mean, that's one of the big good shrines. Uh, let's grab some creature lands here. My, the restless ones are really nice. Let's go Vinestock Anchorage. Now I've got 679. Okay. I do not want to uh, bother just trying to take that. Since they get to tutor for a shrine of Sanctum of All. Um, it could be Discard, it could be Life Gain, it could be Life Drain. Really don't know what they'll have. Uh, one of the things I could do, though, is I could tap some of their lands with Coma. In fact, I'm going to tap... Um, whoops. I'm going to tap two of them while we're still in upkeep. Because I already have Lethal. I need to stop them, though, from casting a spell like Farewell. Pre-combat main's gonna gain them two more. This makes it harder for them. I have to keep one here in case it's not an exiling board wipe. But if it forces them to use their entire turn for it, I have these uh, creature lands able to attack. Marari's Wake just gives them more mana. They shocked in. There's a Supreme Verdict. Okay, so I think I made the right move there. Uh, we're going to give Coma Indestructible. And we can still end the game. I'm feeling the prairie. No, let's use... We'll use our commander for it. As it was meant to be. I don't know, cat. Lands and buffs. Tan Halam. He, he showed up. Mythweaver Pock. Well, if you haven't seen this card yet, you're going to see it now, and you're going to see a lot of it. Mythweaver Pock doubles lands when they enter the battlefield for the first time this turn and can double more than one at a time. Also, on either player's turn. Pock is real, real rude because it gets bigger, too, as all of this is happening. Pretty much always refunding its own mana cost and being a huge, scary threat. Um, okay, we got a board wipe. We have tons of ramp here, uh, but they ramped on turn one, so they're already ahead of us in the ramp department. Oh, look, board wipes. We have both our board wipes here. Farewell, Eternal Wanderer. We sort of have a third board wipe. Um, we have Cyclonic Rift. It's a one-sided board wipe. It's even better for board bounce. So here comes Pock, an unprotected Pock. They did not play it uh, before that. So like if I were a Bant control deck and I had a turn for board wipe, as so many of them do, uh, they would be in some trouble here. Just play the Skyclave Relic. I, I don't actually have anything. If I beside you anything, 
It's like, it's good for them. So the gate to Mannerborn gets copied. Copy goes into play, not even into hand, into play. All these are triggering the tireless tracker. They're gonna get a clue. Drawing cards. Great. Oh, hi, tiny snake. You can come out next turn. So we're just going to throw down our farewell pretty early here. We're going to hit creatures and enchantments. Uh, there isn't anything in graveyards, but I'll still press the button. They'll have to play a land first if they want to get down Pock this turn. Hello, yes. Is it Pock time? No, it's time for the Immortal Sun when we have two Planeswalkers in hand. You know, one of these Planeswalkers, though, I can totally still play. Um, there's, uh, Nissa's just, like, passive doubling of forest mana is so good. We're going to animate our Restless Anchorage. Oh, I shouldn't have played the land. I don't think I needed to. That's fine, though. We can use up our map. I'm going to use it to try and make our Restless Anchorage bigger. Ooh, Reflection Net! A perfect piece of removal for a puck. By the way, yes, I know I can beside you this. Uh, I will likely do it in response to them playing Pock. Um, oh, wait, I didn't leave up green. This did not tap itself for the ability. That's fine. I'll just put him in a net. Boop! This has flash, by the way, and it has another very, uh... I'll call it cute ability. You'll see it in a minute. So, like, my commander's cool, but it's not actually doing that much for me. If there's something under here... Oh, that they, they put it back. I thought they would have destruction for it. You can actually use this to turn into a copy of a card. And turning into a copy of, like, Pock can be really nice. All right, we'll, uh, want to play that. Now we have two Skyclay Relics. In response, I'm going to hit that Immortal Sun. This will give them a land. By the way, giving them a land off that, if they have something like Harrow, can be very funny because it's like, oh, you actually got one land instead of all of those. So they got four mana here. You're making more mana. I feel like you're very, very adept at that. Uh, my plan, by the way, is to use the Eternal Wanderer to make it so Pock just does not exist during their turn. I destroyed the sun. My boy! Ooh, Fabled Passage. This actually changes things a little bit. Using all these forests up. Green. Green. Hey, Nissa. This is going to make these tap for a whole lot more mana. Eternal Wanderer coming out. Saying, hey, sup, what's good? Oh, you know. Not much. Just gonna move Pock out of the way. Entish Restoration in response is going to get them a lot of mana. You're coming with me. 
We're untapping a forest. Bringing out our commander. Using it to animate the net so we can get another copy of the net in hand and use it to exile another creature. We also have a lot of especially flying damage off like Restless Anchorage, um, the other Restless Anchorage, and Nissa Lands. So this means that Hawk does not come back until their end step. Okay, so my three creatures here are gone. That's fine. It's all about what else comes out. Also, we have Portals of Praxy in our deck too, because we can make copies of it. Are there arena exclusive cards? Yes, our commander is one of them. Sorry, I keep making the chair appear in the corner there. I keep putting my leg up on it. Oh, foreign Clex. Ooh, well, now I really want to have a copy of Vorin Clex. I... Ooh, I am in a... I'm in silly girl territory now. Ex excuse me, sir. Hello, yes. All right, so remember the thing I mentioned with the reflection net? Yeah, it's actually really, really cool. So let's get some plus one, plus one counters on this anchorage. And now let's turn our anchorage into Vorinclex. Looking good, sir. By the way, he's a zero, zero. That's a... Uh, why he's appearing as a 4-4. Four, four. That's going to give me even more mana, though. Tap. Tap. Tapity tap. Yeah, you can have your portal. said I won't have enough mana to replay the uh, reflection net here. But I'll still make a copy of it. There's probably a line to lethal during that turn. But I don't need it. I crave it, don't need it. Oh, hey, Prime Time. Yeah, yes, Voren Clex. Make their lands super duper tapped. Yeah, I think if I had, like, animated the Anchorage and turned it into Voren Clex, then uh, it would have been a lot more damage. Since we could have made it not a 0, zero base. We've arrived at Silly Town. Uh, listen, we're playing against Paw. Those are all going to be silly. Hello, nice mana. They're gonna draw a bunch of cards. Thanks, Foreign Clex. Is Silly Town anywhere near Funky Town? Well, let me take you to it. Alright, um, you can get a lot of critters out here. They're about to draw six. It's the same county as Value Town. Huh, I didn't know that. Good to know. I mean, maybe they can get something that gives haste to all their creatures, like a Surak. But, like, we have our board wipe just chilling here. Well, this can gain them a tiny bit of life, the uh, Corsair of Crayfix. What do you think their one creature should be? I think... Kami. A bamboo groves. Grazer got them some... Yeah, the, the Grazer and the Kami putting more lands into play got them a little more mana, but we know they don't have creatures. You can't stop. You can't stop the puck. Oh, look! 
look, they had a fabled passage. Mm -hmm. A little more land. We're uh, just kind of waiting on them here. It's a cute swarm. It's a cute swarm. They can gain another life and get one more mana. Clock player can't stop taking game actions. It's an addiction. All right, they shuffle the top of their library. Well, I mean, if they had the hoof, they would only be able to attack with the one hoof. They currently have four, five, six mana. They've already played their second, their extra land per turn for Oracle. Is Pock the most popular commander? I think right now he may be. Definitely the flavor of the month. Yep. They have four cards in hand. Yeah, you can't do anything about it. We wipe the board, we animate a land, uh, we exile their remaining blocker, we can animate another land too. Uh, something, something, something. Gameplay. GG, Pock. Probably gonna run into a bunch more of you too. Elishnorn Grand Cinnabite makes their creatures stronger and yours a lot weaker. Like, a lot weaker. It's a plus two, plus two on their side, a minus two, minus two on their side, and I expect this is going to be probably mono white weenies because this is a great finisher to have in the command zone a lot of like these weenies decks either rely on early game having like a really good creature in the command zone like a thalia or an adeline or even isamaru something that's a guaranteed turn one play or they're just you know going for the finisher up here this also could be a mono white prison deck which okay if it is, it is, right? I hope they play a creature, though, because I want to put a creature in jail. Howling mine! Okay, so it's going to be a weird lockout deck. Hmm. This should be able to hit creatures or artifacts. I guess it's for this other part. They're cooking? What are they cooking? They cooking uh, some spaghetti? Surgical Metamorph will let me clone something. I could play our commander here. It doesn't do anything, but like, we'll have it. If they just kill it. Copy their howling mine? I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> I don't I don't think I want to copy their howling mine. I don't I don't need more card draw. Oh, hey Elspeth. So I guess it's a big white deck. Not we need at all. How, how strange. Okay. Um Martyr of Dusk? Wait, maybe it is Weenies and it just had a really bad opening hand. I am going to toss this in a net. I can't copy this this turn because it has summoning sickness. I will attack. And I could technically turn a creature into a Martyr of Dusk, but that doesn't seem very good. Now I have too many cards in hand. See if I can make that problem even worse. Land on top? It's not. It's a Lotus Cobra. I like some landfall, though. I will discard the... Planes. Fiend Hunter exiles my commander. I'll decline. I'll just let it live there. 
and a heart. Some ramp. Some stuff. You like this art? Very cool looking. Oh, hey, Coma. That's a good card to have. Let's get out our Lotus Cobra. Some of this. We're going to use the Surgical Metamorph to exile this. Reflection Net. Attack with it. And I am fully understanding that my Lotus Cobra is going to die when they play Norn probably next turn. Yeah, I could see Howling Mine being played in like a children deck because it's like, oh, you're drawing a card. It hurts you. Whereas for me, it's just like, oh, uh, now I just have too many things in hand. Huh, so they got a land. They did not play Norn. They are not born to Norn. Making green, making green, making green, making green. Howling Mine, if you could tap it with something like Maria. Yeah, that gives it another advantage if you draw your opponent doesn't. They want me to discard? Mono White discard? My god! Bringing out the Nissa. Um, it, it's the burnished heart and the mind stone both holding priority, I'm quite sure. Uh, hey! Okay, cool. Um, we will untap this restless anchorage. I'm going to animate the reflection net. I expect them to block and sacrifice with the heart. Or just let it go through, let this get big. Please pass priority, Elish Norn. Please. Animate in the net. Attacking, 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 attacking. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw in the Cobra, too. Blocking the Reflection Net. They sacrifice the heart. That will get them two more lands. They go down to 10 life. Um, certainly could discard something here. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm holding up to Fairy's Protection. Which I still would be with uh, Tatiova play. No, wait. No, I wouldn't. I forgot that that is not a forest. Hmm. Well, then. That's fine. I can recover from a board wipe pretty easily with a Nissa on board. Portal to Phyrexia. Yeah, that works too. Um, we will sacrifice our land, our snake, and our commander. Move my commander to command zone? Sure. Thank you for the extra card. So we will give this the old double tap. Bit of an untap, too. Bolting that in. Animating this branch loft pathway. Is that already lethal? He 
keep making more nets. Swinging. They never played their commander. That's all right. Glad we got to win with some flying lands. Always cool. GG. Sahili, the sun's brilliance. Oh, I recently brewed her too. This is the clones Sahili. She's a, you know, kiki jiki at home. Um, as that little thing pops up, you'll see. For two mana, you get to make a copy of another artifact or creature. It's really cool. Hi, Sahili. The Hilly could land before I could reprieve her. The Hilly, you swinging in? Yep. She deals two damage. I will bounce their Oracle of the Alpha back into hand. I don't have blue mana yet. I'll play Nyssa. You like their Dino Avatar? It's just soft. A fine, fine dinosaur. Um, Clorpenstein, you good? Oh, they're Clorpen. They're clorping. Well, I'm sipping tea, so we'll just uh, chill vibe and hang, I guess. Oh, they said oops. Hey! Oh, and they strangled Nessa. <laughs> uh, we could either go for getting blue mana. Or we could play Essica's Chariot. You wish you could have this in your deck. Not really, it's legendary. Does this get countered? Uh, it gets put back on top of my library. Yeah, the Clorpin over here. Once again, Essica's Chariot. Why aren't you playing your chicken? What the heck is this? Flash bargain. When it enters the battlefield, you'll return a spell or an online permit to its owner's hand. If it was bargained, it makes that cost two more. Huh. It's a bouncer. I guess that's clonable. Obnoxiously so. Ooh, can it? Can I do it here? I got it! Did you make the clone? I want a legitimate business, Sahili. So they have access to essentially a, uh, a bounce counter each turn. Um, I can afford to play that again. May I have my chariot? Ms. Sahili Sun's brilliance. Behold! Card draw! I'm beholding it. I see it. They've got five mana now. That is enough to play and copy Oracle of the Alpha, if they would like to. It gets them two damage in the air and two copies of all of the power nine in their deck. They may instead choose to do it defensively. That'd be kind of cute. One, two, three.
see if they uh, go for a copy and a double block or just a copy and a chump block. Going for the double block, we'll kill the original. And I'll use the Might Stone and Weak Stone to kill Sahili. Could have also used it to like try and get more lands. Sahili is removed from play. And uh, we'll see how many copies of the Power 9 they'll end up in, uh, hitting, because they have 100 cards now in their library, which is uh, super normal. Eidran Archive. Cute little baby. The key to the archive. Counterspell, Day of Judgment, Cross and Grip. Cross and Grip might be cute against them. I'll grab Counterspell and drop Supreme Phantom. Since their commander is a 2-2, two -two, turning our 3-3s three into 4-4s, four I don't think will be that big of a difference. Besides, look at all my big old artifacts. Trumpet Carnosaur! Bouncing my halfling back into hand. Aw. You don't want to bounce my kitten? Are you not smitten? With my kitten? So they can just copy this each turn to discover five. Nice. But what if we had a bunch of little dudes? Grab me that breeding pool, please. Getting another copy of Might Stone and Weak Stone into hand. Chipwreck Dowser is able to return a spell to hand. I think that is very much worth countering because otherwise there are there's a lot of ways that they can just kind of infinitely loop like extra turn spells or counter spells, and it's such a bummer to play against. I decide what I want to copy this turn. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tap. All those mono white sources. Their tails ending it. Hey, everyone, get in here. Move our commander back to the command zone. Use our key to cast key. Pick a couple extra bugs. Bug, 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 bug. <laughs> Illusion it. It's going to put two cards in hand. I also built Sahili recently. I found a, I found that she was really fun. Mine was much less control-ish than this version. Um, so if you want to see a less controly version of it, go check it out. Ooh, okay. That said, it does still have infinite loops in it. The Mox Pearl, Mox Jet. Then in the Bugbear, you got three mana. It's enough to copy the Carnosaur. You're saying GG? Yeah, well, I just want to make sure first, because I don't trust like that. Okay, cool. They're conceding. Yeah, on three mana, it's one of those, like, I don't know, they could make a clone discover into a board wipe, right? Or do they not have... Oh, they didn't have blue! Never mind, we're fine. We're totally fine. GG. 
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you like seeing Tan Halam, the world walker who makes the world walk because he animates lands and occasionally artifacts. Uh, in this video, I did not end up looping the one ring, but I did have a nasty game off of the recording where um, I was looping the one ring up against a POC deck who had, I will say, a few dozen creatures out. They couldn't deal damage to me. I ended up getting a key to the archive, which got me a board wipe. I turned a kite sail. I used kite sail arsonist to turn a creature into a treasure so it wouldn't die to the board wipe. But when the board wipe killed the kite sail larcenist, uh, it brought it back as a creature with no other creatures on the battlefield and we were able to swing in for lethal. It was a nasty cool game and one of the weirdest endings to a game that I could have had. So yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff you can do with this deck. If you're looking for the deck list, it's in the description of the video. If you are looking to find my stream, twitch.tv slash Amazonian, and if you're looking for me to build a specific deck, please let me know in the comments. Some of the comments I received uh, are, hey, I want to see Ashnod or Judith, Garuda clones, Prosper, Yan Yansen, maybe some upgraded Chatterfang. Remember, if you tell me, I'll write it down and it might get to be built or updated if it's another deck that I've already built, but maybe haven't worked on in a while like Chatterfang. Thank you so much for watching and have a brutal day.